A very good evening to you and thank you so much for joining us on this edition of Spectrum Extra, reviewing the major events of the week. My name is Kenneth Lukaganderson, your host. Today we'll be looking at a number of issues, two main issues uh, that are, have emerged during this particular week. President Yoweri Museveni took everybody by surprise by suddenly sacking the executive director of Kampala Capital City Authority, uh, that is Dorothy Kisaka, her deputy engineer David Luimbazi and director of public health Dr. Daniel Okello over the Kitezi incident. Well, so many people were saying uh, there is no action coming from the side of government who takes a, a responsibility for the lives that were lost. And uh, finally, President Yoram Seveni uh, took action and these three are likely to face prosecution given the fact that uh, he directed uh, investigations to commence. Uh, among the things they are being accused of uh, is you know, negligence of duty, but also misuse of public resources. President Yoweri Museveni is saying they were supposed to buy equipment worth three billion shillings, but they chose to hire, uh, thereby spending seven billion shillings in excess. And uh, so far, we already know that uh, they have been replaced by some uh, people who are in acting capacity. Uh, we have uh, Frank Rusa, who has been working as a director of legal affairs in the same institution, becoming the executive director. There's also a deputy who has also been working in the same office. Um, he's called Nowera Robert. He has been the director of revenue. He becomes uh, the deputy executive director. And then we have Sarah Zalwango Karen, who has also been the deputy in this particular docket, assuming the role of director of public health. Now today, handover ceremonies took place at the city hall. Now, there are so many things uh, that have been going on, including the Red Lord Mayor um, welcoming this development, saying he has been vindicated. Mm. He has, however, called for a thorough investigation into KCC, KCCA, where he says uh, there are so many things going wrong. He has urged the IGG to institute a unit that uh, she promised in order to come to um, the top of all the things that are happening at KCCA. He has already raised a red flag about the planned procurement of land uh, for a uh, new landfill and he says there are some people who already want to steal taxpayers money so we'll be asking what exactly are the main issues at kcca uh, even after government promised transformation upon taking over uh, direct management how can we make our city better taking into account the many challenges amid this shortage of resources is this a general governance problem in our country and kampala is just a symptom or we are looking at uh, a situation where uh, those who have been sacked uh, can easily be replaced and things go back to normal. We'll be looking at that in detail. Today, um, the former leader of opposition, uh, Matthias Impuga, also made public some electoral reforms that he intends to push forward in the parliament. One, restore and entrench articles, article on presidential term limits. He introduced second tier of parliament headed by deputy president. We will also be on the ballot paper as a, pres as a presidential candidate or runner mate, running mate. He wants to see an upper house to have 39 MPs from the original 39 districts. He wants the size of parliament reduced to 146 MPs uh, with an MP being picked from each district, retain women district representatives and seats for MPs from the 10 cities. He wants voters uh, to be allowed to petition court in a presidential election and he wants declaration of presidential results for districts uh, uh, results for districts as is done for MPs. Presidential results should be declared at district as is done for MPs before transmission of results to the National Tally Center. He also wants to see uh, prisoners and Ugandans in the diaspora allowed to vote. We'll be going through all those issues. I have a panel of three today. Let me introduce uh, Dr. Sarah Birete, Chief Executive Officer at the Center for Constitutional Governance. Lawyer and Pandit on Governance and Human Rights Issues. Good evening and thank you very much for joining us, Sarah. Thank you for inviting me. Good evening, listeners. Also in studio, Mr. Isaac Kayonde Gashuji. He's an economist, political analyst, who ran for the Gomba West parliamentary seat. He's from the NRM party. Good evening and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for the invitation. Good evening, listeners. Okay, we are waiting for our third panelist. When he gets in here, I will introduce him. Um, Sarah, I will begin with you. For um, the many weeks we uh, reflected on the Kitezi incident and the situation in Kampala, you were among those who were skeptical, saying there will be nothing done. Suddenly, President Yoweri Museveni sucks the leadership in KCCA. Mm. Did you see this coming? 
Well, uh, the president acted almost after two months of the Chitezi landfill scandal. I, I think for me as a citizen, have mistakes having happened, I would have expected the leadership of KCCA to resign after loss of lives, after failure, they should have apologized to the residents of Kampala that they were meant to serve, citizens of Uganda and the affected people in the Chitezi land field collapse and resigned. They waited to be pushed, which was unfortunate, but the president finally acted which is good after the release of IGG's report. Good, a bit late, but I believe it was not only the three people that led to the negligence that cost us about 35 lives. We have unaccounted four persons. Those people whose relatives cannot have closure by having a decent burial of their relatives, we still have citizens buried by garbage that we can't even uh, retrieve their remains. That's an assumption. Yeah, the the people they said they're uh, assuming that there are some people who could have. It is a report of retrieved. the OPM. I've been following the reports of the OPM. Okay. Yeah, I'm not assuming, and there are relatives who say they haven't seen their citizens. It's not an assumption. <laughs> We, the rescue efforts were able to, re, to save 15 people that were retrieved alive, and I wish them quick recovery. But also we have challenges with resettling the affected persons that are still held up in the Red <coughs> Cross tent, about to, uh, so many families. And the, the efforts to reinstate leadership in Kampala. But why did we get to the Chitezi point? Mm. Is what I would like to discuss. Okay. From the enactment of the KCCA Act in 2011, there is a dual political presence at KCCA. There is a constant political struggle, pull and push. And the biggest loser with the enactment of this act is a voter in Kampala, is a citizen in Kampala that does not have direct accountability channels. You have a political leadership that is elected by the people, currently headed by the Lord Mayor Elias Urkwagwa and her deputy. Her deputy is appointed from among the councillors, but the Lord Mayor is directly elected by the people. The Lord Mayor, when you go through the act, the functions of the executive director, the functions of the Lord Mayor, the functions of the Lord Mayor, other than approving a strategic plan presented to him by the technical team, are largely ceremonial. The act goes ahead to say that the Lord Mayor will preside over diplomatic and civic engagements mm. and ceremonial <coughs> functions among the functions of the Lord Mayor. In a democratic dispensation, when a voter casts a vote as to who should govern them, as he contained under Article 1 of the Constitution, Article 1 specifically states that all state power is derived from the people, whose will and consent is quantified in free and fair elections. And the people who exercise this state power should derive it from the people. So you have uh, a Lord Mayor who derives this power through the will and consent of the voters. But he's almost idle in the office. Even the people cannot question him on why it has happened. Case in point, a memo on the warning of it has pending collapse. He was not even copied. He was not even in copy as a political leadership. It is written to the technical team. He does not access it until it appeared in the media after the collapse of the garbage. That shows you the redundancy of the political office. That shows you how the power was taken from the hands of the people. Because if the Lord Mayor was directed in charge of Kampala, the voters in Kampala would have had a right to say resign. But how do you now tell the Lord Mayor to resign over Chitezi? Because of the confusion at KCCA. So you have the power from the people mm. in the hands of the Lord Mayor. You have another set of the power from the people in the hands of the councillor presided over by the speaker. You have the, another set of power not from the people but through the president, 
through the most powerful people at KCC, the executive director, the powerful directors, and another set of power from the president through the minister and the state minister. When you, um, when you say the president, you also forget that uh, he also wields the power from the president. Yes, but I'm talking about the voter in Kampara. Okay. And also you need to note that the majority of voters in Kampara also do not necessarily vote for the president, who is controlling Kampara through their appointees. So that's how the voter in Kampara is at the loss. So when you come, the law provides that, the KCC Act provides that there will be an, a minister overseeing the authority. And when this law was first enacted, the minister in charge of the presidency was the overseer of the authority. There was no minister of state seated, minister and minister of state seated at KCC. And the law does not provide for the same. It says there will be a minister overseeing to make matters worse, in this regime, there is an appointment of a minister and a minister of state. So this state hijack of the people's will and consent, the Kampala people's will and consent on how they wish to be governed, is part of the confusion that has caused the loss of lives in each state. All right. Well, getting back to you to dig deeper on, on this particular issue, but let's now hear from Mr. Kayonde. What's your take on this situation? Sarah mm. says that uh, um, Kitezi simply reflective of the governance issues that we have at KCCA, including power of the people being taken away from them. Uh, well, uh, before I address that uh, issue, <coughs> thank you very much. Uh, I, before I address that uh, issue, I want to, to talk about the Chitezi issue and what has happened. Mm. You know, we are, in a, we are in a situation where the president and the lack of trust the government has, especially from the urban population, is that they are damned if they did they do damned if they don't you know when the president when chitezi happened sarah is the same person who came here and said uh, there's nothing nobody is going to right it was based on the fact that she was saying this because she wasn't seeing any action or has zero trust in the people in the powers that be to do anything about it mm. but as it has exhibited several times, uh, President Museven is not one to rush into issues. He has never been a, he has never been a, 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 a populist. He takes time to react to things. Now he, he he asked the IGG to investigate this matter, and the IGG made a report, which report she then uh, she then gave to him, and he acted on it. Mm. It has taken two months. But uh, yeah, I, for me, by all intents and purposes, that's the quickest investigation that has happened around this, this in city. Uganda. In Uganda. Mm. Two months, the president <laughs> has seen it. He has said, okay, mm. now I have taken action. These are the people who I feel are responsible for it. They should go. Now, once that is settled, everybody who is now saying there's nothing going to be done is now saying, yes, okay, he has done but. They are always adding the but. Let's first applaud that look at least we have people who are responsible, who have been, uh, you know, fired, and that's the beginning. And he has said, okay, the investigation will continue, as, so it may not give the people closure, but at least something has been done. And I think there was general outcry from the pub uh, public and uh, seeing uh, street, uh, you know, the street cleaners, uh, you know, celebrating, celebrating and everything, uh, you know, it it it, it gives. Um, it shows that uh, the, the leadership was uh, a bit uh, was not so popular among the uh, the staff of uh, of KCCA. That said, uh, I want to first disabuse this notion that the the Lord Mayor has absolutely nothing to do uh, in that office, mm. and that he's uh, largely ceremonial, and that yeah. As she mentioned... That's what they have told us. That, uh, That's look, what even President Museveni said. No, 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 no. I want us to go back to where this all began and where the city was before 2011. The city was, you would vote, the, 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 you would vote your, the mayors and uh, councillors and they would go and then the, the accounting officer was called the town clerk. Uh, and uh, everything was in the direction of the politicians. The politicians decided what happened in, a, in a, what happened around the city and the town clerk and the rest simply accounted for it and that was it mm. 2011 the, the creation of that act was as a result of 
an attempt to really try and improve the city. Right? And after years of decay, I don't remember when, you know, people talk about NRM being very corrupt and everything, but KCC was one of the most corrupt, well, KCC, not KCCA. Mm. KCC was one of the most corrupt institutions before 2011. They, we, you know... And now? I mean, even if you're arguing that they are, they are still corrupt, they have been ranked by uh, by they have been the ranked, IGG no no not the IGG mm. by international firms mm. and they are, they have a rating at least when MCC was there they had a an A minus rating an international A minus rating for uh, to to borrow funds they could borrow funds as an institution of government from the World Bank and IMF this was not the case before you know mm. um, but she came and set up structures. Now, that was 2011. I can tell you when this city was in the hands of politicians, we lost every single space, public space, to businessmen. City square, the markets, Basaja Balaba. When was that? Was it in the hands of, uh, of, of an executive director? We lost. Their people have built along uh, the Nachivuwa channel. They created titles over... Uh, over uh, 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 um, Areas that should be protected. That sh areas should, that should be protected. Mm -hmm. I mean, the rot was systemic. When MCC took over in 2011, a structure was done. This structure, like she said, the roles of the mayor. In those roles, there is, uh, what do you call it? The, the ceremonial roles. You know, mm -hmm. those are also highlighted. Mm -hmm. But in there, there is an oversight role of administrative administrative mm. uh, it's oversight I, I, I it has uh, an oversight he has an oversight role mm. uh, in administrative matters mm. he, the, when they sit when they sit the accounting officer the ed comes to their to council to approve this budget in there is a role that once you promise the people of Kampala it is up to you to ensure that your policies are given to the ED to incorporate them in the affairs of the city. You can't tell me then that his role now there becomes ceremonial. All right. I think you followed closely yes. the, the happening at City Hall. Mm. The pool here and there. Yeah. Lukwag has been raising a number of issues to do with accountability. Yes. He has also been raising a number of issues to do with the programs of the city. Yeah. But he's not listened to. I will explain that. Mm. There are two things. One of the things that uh, the Act created is that it is very clear how it is supposed to function. Even these amendments, when uh, Lukwago kept saying uh, they want to take my powers away and everything, you know, when it went to Parliament, they simply took him out of chairing council meetings. They created the position of Speaker and Deputy Speaker to 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 manage council, but he is the head of the Kampala. No, the city executive committee. Mm. There's a city executive committee. Exactly. They are currently in a war between the speaker and the Lord Mayor, where the executive committee comes up with a, uh, the, 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 the plan, gives it to the, to the council, council approves that plan, then uh, the executive director implements. That is what, that is the structure. That is what is in the law. That is the structure of the Kampala City, city Council. Now, the only problem I see mm. is that the head of the technical wing is appointed by the president, while the head of the political is appointed by the people. These two naturally are going to clash because none of them, uh, the, what, the authority, the appointing authorities, their allegiance is to the one who has, has, uh, uh, has appointed them. And now we have a situation where the head of the political wing in uh, Kampala City Council is comes from the opposition side. Now, the head of, they put Kampala Central in under the hands of the central government. Now, you have an issue there, is that how do you align the desires of the central government and the opposition head of, po the, of the politics? That's where you find uh, the, the clash is. Otherwise, if we were in, a, we, we were in an ideal situation where the uh, opposition person can compromise can compromise on many things and be able to, to
to be able to work with the central government. As it is, Lukwago doesn't want to even hear anything. But uh, compromise, when you talk about compromise, Lukwago's voice has been vocal on the issues of accountability. He tells us money is being stolen. Nothing is done. He talks about need for more funding to implement uh, city projects. No funding is provided. Yes. So um, how do you expect him to, 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 to operate in that, in that kind of circumstance? Yeah. So this is why I'm saying that, look, the politics, are override, politics is overriding reason. You know, the politics is overriding uh, reason. Look, well, let me give you an example of one project. Just one project. It's uh, street lighting. Street lighting uh, was uh, designed, uh, there's a, there's a, the, Af the French development agency, uh, created provided the funding provided funding mm. to do the studies and everything and they did a master plan and everything and it was about 70 million dollars yeah mm. and that 70 million dollars needed approval from cabinet and uh, the president uh, for the government to borrow now unfortunately the government didn't want to borrow the money for whatever reason yeah not to increase their their, their debt limits Lukwago was purely on one thing. Those people have refused. That is it. You get mm. this but, project. But let's they put it, let us no listen. Eh. It, they, it wasn't a question of of of, uh, of uh, how many things do you know that the PSST has had in uh, in collaboration with uh, with uh, different. So it was uh, not a priority. It, it, was, it may not have been a priority. All right. But Lukwago, as the head of Kampala City could have influenced that decision to get that money. All right. Spectrum X on Radio 1 FM 90. Let's go for a break now. When we return, I'll allow Sarah to also weigh in on this issue of uh, Lukwago, the Lord Mayor, whether the Lord Mayor uh, of Kampala has any role to play and whether they're actually being allowed to, to play that role. Um, is it an issue of opposition versus NRM that is playing out of City Hall? Is it a battle of supremacy? Who should control Kampala in terms of politics? Now stay tuned, Radio 1 FM 95. Keep your comments coming via the WhatsApp line 0703. 090. Spectrum Extra continues after this break. Thank you so much for staying with us on Spectrum Extra live on Radio 1 FM 90 reviewing the major events of the week. Right now we are focusing on the change of guard at City Hall. President Chewa Room 70 firing uh, three top officials, replacing them with uh, those who are in acting capacity. Will this help to solve the problems in the city? And all this is because of the Chitezi incident that we had. And even as we speak now, there is rubbish piling up in different markets and streets of this city. And uh, KCC is struggling to find a piece of land where they can actually uh, continue to dump this rubbish. I'm speaking to Dr. Sarah Birete, CEO at the Center for Constitutional Governance, and Mr. Isaac Kayonde Gashuji, economist, political analyst, who also ran for the Gomba West parliamentary seat in the last elections. He comes from the NRM. We expect a third guest. He is on the way. When he arrives here, I uh, will introduce him. Dr. Sarah, uh, your quick response to some of the issues that uh, Mr. Kayonde has put across. Do you agree that uh, indeed uh, the Lord Mayor uh, has some work to do and he has simply failed to deliver what he has been acting um, against uh, what would you know what the good things that the government would want to do I in the city Wh what is the object of the kampala capital state authority act an object of any law clearly states the purpose of the law or why the law was enacted the object of kampala capital state authority clearly states and it's in bold to provide for the the, the an act to provide in accordance with Article 5 of the Constitution, for the Kampala capital city of Uganda, and to provide for administration of the city by the central government. Yes, yes. That's the purpose of the law. Yeah. What does it mean? The administration of Kampala capital city is under yes. central yes. government. Absolutely. This act removes the elected leaders who are under local government. I, I hope we all know the difference between the central government and local government. That's why the president, the director, appoints the executive director and the directors on the advice of public service under Article 17 of the same law. So this law kicked out the elected leadership from the direct administration of Kampala Affairs and put it in the hands of the president through his appointed staff. 
That's the confusion of cases here. The rest of the issues are secondary. The purpose of the law is to provide for the takeover of the administration of the city by central government. You, you, will, you will come in. Just read the law. The law speaks for itself. That's why the di direct administration, the day-to-day -day work, is in the hands of the executive director, who is acting on behalf of the president and appointed by central government. So what is the role of the other elected leaders? I know that Kampara is at state level, but now we have other cities, other cities coming up and, and whatever. What is the role of LC5 chairman? What is the role of other mayors in other cities as compared to Kampala? In Kampala, you have this role removed from the direct elected people and taken to the end. It's specified in the act. Take over by central government. Specified in black and white. So, when you come in now to say, Rukwa, if, if Rukwa was a supervisor of, the, of these technical staff, like you want to insinuate under the metropolitan law, where we had the, the mayor, deputy mayor, town clerk, and technical staff, under local government arrangement. If Ulquag was indeed a supervisor of this staff, the memo written by uh, the former director of public health, Okero, I'm sure everybody saw it, mm. it would have been addressed to Ulquag, or at least copied in. It was neither addressed nor copied to the elected leadership of Kampala. We all know that. That alone shows you the working of the administration of the city. Look, I saw that memo after Chita's collapse. It had been authored two months ago. Is he a supervisor or not? He's not. Look at the chain of command at, at KCC. You have the executive director and his director, her director, it's, I think they're about five. Then you have the minister and deputy minister. You have the, these people, I think they, they had had two meetings with the, the head of public service, uh, Madame Nashove. So where do you think they report? You think they report to Lukwago? Do they report to Lukwago if he's their supervisor? No, they don't. So what are we talking about? We are talking about a cocktail mix of political agencies at the city hall. We are talking about a permanent power struggle created a, 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 a creature of this act. We are talking about the periphery role of the voter in Kambara because their elected leaders are periphery in the matters of governing the city. For me, this is the problem as a governance expert that I want to rectify that KCCA. The relationship of a voter in governance is representation and participation. And this is followed by accountability. Can we give a Kampala voter a right to participate, to vote, to be represented, but also to hold their elected leaders accountable? It does not exist today. Do they hold each sack accountable? No. This is the problem of Kampala. Well, uh, I've listened uh, carefully to Sarah, and, mm. uh, and again, like I said, it, the, 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 the devil is in the detail. That you see, and I wanted to read some of the functions of the Lord Mayor so that at least we are very, very clear. All right. Monitor the administration of Kampala City. Provide guidance to the division administrators and represent, okay, represent Capital City on the Metropolitan Authority. Right? Mm. This is in the roles, the functions of the Lord Mayor. Read them. Uh, read all of them. Let me read all of them. Let me start from here. Okay. The Lord Mayor is the political head of the capital city, presides over all meetings of the authority, performs ceremonial and civic functions. He also hosts foreign and local dignitaries, heads the authority in developing strategies and programs for the development of Kampala City. Just ceremonial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. All right. All right. That's the road. Go, go on. Mm -hmm. Heads the authority in developing strategies, programs for the development of the capital city. Monitor the administration of the capital city. Provide guidance to the division 
administrators and represents the capital city on the metropolitan authority. All the right. Lord Mayor, in the performance of his or her functions, mm. is answerable to the authority mm. and the minister. All right. Yeah. Now, you, you've, you've, answered, you, 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 it's, you've, it's, you've, 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 you've provided good points the there. And uh, you, you actually explained that, uh, you point out that uh, one of the things the Lord Mayor is supposed to do is to, to develop programs, mm. Um, also for, 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 the, for the implementation of the city and development yes. of the city, yes. but also do the monitoring at what. What is on record is that... Mm. And reports to the... What is on record, what yeah, we have yeah. heard from Arias Lukwago, mm. um, several times he has been in this studio and even the press conference he has been addressing, yes. is the fact that wh whatever he proposes yeah. is not respected. Absolutely. Secondly, when he does even the monitoring and talks about the gross corruption uh, mm. that is taking place at KCCA, mm. People are not held to account. For instance, he talked about, he gives an example of Kitezi. He warned ab about the potential danger of Kitezi early this year and even said in 2015 they had indicated that Kitezi had to be locked down. He was not listened to. Yeah. That's why he's saying that he has been vindicated. Uh, look. Mm. I don't know wh what vindication... Uh, he vindication simply meaning that uh, he has been telling the public the truth. No, what I'm saying... And it's I the government what, that has not been listening. I don't know listening. What, what vindication he needs with, death, with people dying. Whether that was vindication for him as people have died. No, we, what, uh, what, <laughs> what I am trying to explain to you... Again, mm. Mm. this is what uh, we cannot continuously continue so, to, to be politicking all So how do, how do we solve that problem now? This is it. The problem stems, and I've told you, the law is not perfect, right? Mm. And it's continuously, and every year, people make amendments and everything. In the proposals that he has brought, in the strategic, one of his roles, tell me what Lukwago, with exception of coming to tell us that he gave a warning. Here, it says, develop strategies and programs. Right. What strategy has Lukwago developed? Or what program have you, has have, have you had the with? privilege of reading the um, annual uh, state of kampala address which is issued by the lord mayor no unfortunately you not. haven't you, you need to get a copy and see a number of strategies that are uh, the lord mayor's office has put across yes. approved by council okay the, but the, never implemented th that's you. what it tells absolutely us. now mm. that's what i'm trying to tell you also mm. that the only mismatch here is that you have a clash a continuous clash between the technical and the political wing, mm. right? Mm. Let me finish. Okay. That does not help the situation of Lukwago. So how do we that solve that problem? Sh should we scrap an elected mayor? Should we go back to the system that we had in the past? Well, this week we had from Uhuru, who is chairman of the NRM in central Kampala, but also the mayor of Kampala Central, saying that it's better we go back to the old system. Kampala should be treated as a local government, not a, a special entity the way it is, because everything now is about power here, power there. Yes, I mean, I, 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 I could understand he's also looking for power. I mean, politicians, that's their, uh, that's their daily bread. They and are actually, he, he was speaking from a, a dialogue where we were, the focus was on solid waste management. Yes. And he was passionate and saying uh, he can't even find money mm -hmm. to have the garbage in Kampala Central cleaned up because everything has to be approved from the authority uh, and uh, the, the, uh, the management is not doing that and you see i'll tell take you back some of us you us who grew up in the 80s and 90s know exactly this city was not under the central government we know how garbage was kampala had uh, was one of the dirtiest cities you know we had skips skips outside our homes eh? in nakasero kololo in mengo everywhere there was a skip outside people's homes, you know? So for me, the innovations and the creations that, that, uh, that created that turnaround in 2011 mm. vindicated those who said that, look, we need to create a new law and change the management of Kampala City. Sarah, now, uh, how do we deal with this situation? You, you uh, see, I was uh, paying attention when uh, my co-panelist was reading the duties of the Lord Mayor. The first duty and the last duty alone shows you the confusion. The Lord Mayor is the political head of the authority. The last duty, the Lord Mayor will report to the minister. Who is fooling who? So who is the political head? You see, Tell me, all ministers, all ministries and government departments 
other than the president, vice president, and prime minister. Mm. The highest political head is a minister. Mm. So how do you say that the road mayor is a political head and the road mayor will report to the minister? Uh, like I said, the law is not perfect. Really. That's the confusion. Mm. So they say that the, ro the road mayor is a political head. Is <laughs> There is no political head who reports to another political appointee. Then why are they? Fighting? No, 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 no. Wait, I'm coming. I'm, I'm telling you the problem that is in the law, and I'm showing you the problem. Even where you tried to bring details, mm. the political head who reports to another political appointee. What kind of political head is that? And Rukwagu, as a road mayor, he has the mandate of all the voters, majority voters in Kampala. And, and you subject him to somebody who is an elected mere appointee. Is that a political head? Where does the power of the voter go? Representation, participation, accountability. I want us to position the, the, the situation of a voter in Kampala who wakes up and elects their political head, and this political head is helpless and is reporting to 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 other people with no people's mandate no, no voters mandate what kind of political power is that this is the problem of Kampala. and let's we agree that either the central government takes responsibility for all the mistakes in Kampala, as stated in the object of the act to take over the administration of the state by the central government or we repeal the KCCA Act and return this power to the people to elect their leaders and hold them accountable for their omissions and commissions in office. We cannot have it two way. All right. Spectrum makes on Radio 1 FM 90. We have comments that are already coming in from uh, listeners. Good evening, Kenneth. George, uh, listening in from Bunga, he says, My humble appeal to acting executive director KCCA is to use um, iron fist hand without compromise to restore sanity in the city. Uh, to first leave Wolokoso of Lord Mayor who promotes impunity in the city which has caused disorder. Uh, where border border guys occupy lanes meant for pedestrians, walk the same way, uh, with taxi drivers everywhere knocking pedestrians off but you have nowhere to report because the Lord Mayor will defend those uh, Ill illegalities. Good evening Kenneth. Um, uh, enjoy job. Arua boy listening in from uh, Namungona, he says, the issue of Kitezi for a caring president wouldn't take long to sack the three members. Lukwago is ever, he says, Lukwago is ever blowing a whistle at the corrupt officials and governments underfunding. This man in the studio, I think he has not been in Uganda. That's why he's making such submissions against Lukwago. It is hard to defend the mess done by NRM government. Lastly, our constitution gives a lot of powers to the president, and now he's appointing uh, incompetent People. Well, now, let's look at the situation. We have now people who are in acting capacity uh, and not uh, substantive in office. Uh, they have been given some time, uh, maybe three months or so, uh, to hold forth until a, a new process, a, a new uh, set of leaders come in place. Uh, what we are actually being told that a public service will be involved in this process. And one of the things Lukwag has talked about, uh, about, uh, about, uh, the process of appointing a new executive director. He actually wants it to be competitive. People should apply and compete as if they are um, comp uh, they are applying for a job to run a, a corporate entity. Yeah. What would be your take on, on that? Yeah. And uh, well, I think the president also made it very clear they should go through a process. Uh, applications should be taken from the public and uh, they go through the Public Service Commission to find uh, su suitable suitable heads. Uh, first, that uh, I want to respond to uh, to one of your <laughs> listeners who said that I've been out of this. You have been out of this country. Uh, no, I think uh, I think he's uh, he's uh, extremely mistaken. I am um, I've been here for for all my life. In fact, anyway. somebody else writes in and says, uh, "Mr. Lukwago, kindly mm. tell the guy in the studio that he is talking to an informed audience and not as ag ignorant as he wants to insinuate." Uh, Sarah, continue educating him that the Lord Mayor's hand is tied and he can't do much. Uh, yeah. Let him question the law and not the person of areas Lukwago. Yeah, uh, well, I can understand uh, the sentiments because that's what we have been told. That's what we have. Uh, w w that's what we have been fed all, all along. The issue here is. Fine. The law has its lacunas and uh, problems. Let us sort out the law. Let us know who, who does what, when they do what. 
you know, so that at least that is out of the way. The issue here I'm trying to say is that the political leaders in Kampala have a role to play. They have a role to play. Now, whether they are not in tandem with the executive, uh, the, the technical wing, that is the creation of the continuous politicking that is happening. I'll give you an example. For me, if anything, people who were busy uh, throwing uh, stones at uh, Jennifer Musisi when she was here are now coming back to say, oh, you know what, uh, you know, Jennifer was uh, very, you know... But he, also, uh, the, the, president, the, him. the president uh, himself uh, fired the pres him. Jennifer Musisi. Please, please let's, 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 let's get the facts right. Yeah, well, let me give the you the president facts. Let, let, me give you, let me give you the facts. Musisi, Musisi was never fired. Musisi resigned her position. She wrote a, 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 a report and gave reasons for her resignation. Her contract had just been renewed in 2018. Mm, but yeah? the, the appointing authority, yes. the appointing authority yes. apparently didn't find her useful. No, 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 no. When, no, when, no, he, no, when no, he actually no. said that uh, uh, he had uh, worked against uh, the wishes of the NRM by yeah, uh, a sort of, you know, going after the voters of yes, NRM. Yes, yes. And that is that was the intersection between politics and technical work. And Musisi highlighted it in her resignation. She was never fired. When she was resigning, she said, I have lost the political will to transform the city. She wrote that in her resignation letter. And when she was talking about losing that political will, she was not talking about the squabbles she was having with Lukwago. She was talking about the political will from the president. And why? She had three. She tried, and this is where the politics affects uh, the, the, the development of the city. Mm. She tried to organize the border border uh, industry. industry. Mm. Uh, coming up with stages, naming them and everything. And uh, when she was about to implement, which meant that she, that uh, border borders were going to reduce in the city significantly, the, pres the president, through the minister at the time, uh, that was, uh, I think, Betty Kamya, who was there, uh, they had uh, c their own clashes over the markets and everything. That program was stopped. She tried to do the carnival, I think, of 2018, mm. where she had mobilized the resources from the private uh, companies and everything, and when she was going, it was at the peak of Bobby Wine uh, issues. That was also stopped. She went for the market. Uh, Who stopped her? No, the, the, the state. The state was politicking. Thank and saying, you. look, I, I'm just giving you what it means that the politics, the state has its reasons why it's doing it, right? Thank you. Yeah, the state is doing these things, to pro whether it's uh, for power retention or whatever it is, that is it. The understanding they gave her mm. when she was trying to organize the border border industry, they said uh, she was going to, uh, people were going to lose jobs in, 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 in mass. Mm, right, mm. she lost that. So, so the, the other third and fourth, I think, was budgets. Mm. Now, a leader who s looks at her role and says, "You see, I have become redundant because of this role." Yeah, you're giving me these things, and you're not giving me the tools or whatever it is that she she had designed. Makes the decisions and resigns. Right? You cannot tell me the Lord Mayor. <laughs> I'm just giving you an example. So, <laughs> so th th this is really very strange. So mm -hmm. the government appoints somebody, mm -hmm. fails to give them all those things, and the best they should do is resign. No, no, no. Yes, they resigned. They resigned because of the political will. All right. And the political influence. <clears throat> There's another mm -hmm. comment coming in here. Radio One, thank you for bringing Isaac. But if indeed Lukwago had risen 15 years of fighting, and I'm sure he will come again, to cry again in 2026. Yes. If he's a leader, he would resign because of these continuous challenges, but he has not. Mm -hmm. Lukwago loves being, Lukwago loves being, uh, loves politicking than working. When KCCA does something good, he wants it attributed to him. When bad, he runs away like a headless chicken to media to protect himself. He should also resign. No one saw Lukwago protest on behalf of, uh, about Kitezi or even ran to media houses uh, to talk to journalists about Kitezi and showed the whole world uh, that he was in favor of the people. When Jennifer was around, he made noise on potholes. Have they disappeared after she left? He is... Well, he says, Lukwag has been in office for 15 years and can't uh, show something good that he has done for the city. Sarah, let me get your responses uh, to these issues. You know, I, I, I was happy when... Uh, 
was when my company was explaining Kayone. how the the Isaac how the state frustrated Musisi. The Musisi was not frustrated by anybody except the state. She resigned. She got a better offer in New York, where she is in charge of uh, CETA demonstration. We lost a good talent, but it's important to put it on record that she was frustrated by the state. Their intentions are best known by them. She was not frustrated by the people. Uh, I thought I needed to clarify that. Uh, mm. Let me also just clarify, just uh, because I brought it up. She, she uh, was, made v was very clear that when she took over the role, she was frustrated by the political wing of the city, but had the backing of the president then, right? Fast forward. Her then the state stand then against the, the president. Then the president also stand against the president. She was even humiliated on the a public rally. Yes, the president might have turned uh, against her, but for political reasons outside the the city. So, um, y y in your conclusion, yes. you're saying you are confirming the that had the Bacha political interests, yes. the political interests of the NRM. Uh, the and the fact that the opposition is the one that is in charge of the city yes is what be is causing the one confusion that in at, at city hall and not necessarily the law this, this is why we need to return the city to its dwellers to its voters let them determine its leadership let them hold that leadership accountable that's why we need to repeal the kcca act i, I mean for me let the interests of the city remain democratic and be contested for democratically from the voters. A comment coming in from Sharif. He says, despite the high unemployment rate in Uganda and Kampala, government is looking for foreign investors to come here and crush Kasasido. Then we have another comment here. Our new director, Rusa, should stick to the management of KCCA. Fighting against the Lord Mayor has clearly cost all the three past directors and ministers. And where are they now? As long as the mayor is popularly elected by the people of Kampala and the city director is just appointed the mayor wields the greater will from the people. That's a comment coming in from Kasozi Mulindwa. Yes. That's democracy. You see, we need to, to accept that if Uganda is a democratic country, I know we have challenges. Mm. If we go back to Atko 1 and say that power, all state organs will derive power from the people, and the will and consent of the people as to who should govern them will be determined by the ballot. Let's return Kampara City and its affairs to be determined by the ballot, by the voters. Let's stop the maneuvers of hijacking people's power. A comment comes in from Peter Wamboga Mugiria in Ibali. He says, my brother, why doesn't Lukwago resign from a system where he's non-performing? Why doesn't he leave the rotten system collapse on the owners under its weight? And when then the, what happens to the When vote? the opposition continuously reject and cry foul about something, the NRM is happy that it is effectively squeezing them. Why can't the opposition learn, rerun, and unlearn? Just like the LR, NRM never learns, and their crafty tricks even hurt the public more, and they reject it even the more. Sarah, let me ask you this question. If you are in, in the shoes of uh, areas Lukwago, and uh, you look at your performance vis-a-vis -vis what you're expected to do as the Lord Mayor as per the law, would you resign? I would strongly mobilize for the repeal of the KCCA Act if I had the mandate of the people secured in a credible, free and fair election. The people deserve service. Our constitution is clear as to how people are governed. Article 1 is very clear and entrenched. Kampala people are also Ugandans. We should return their power to them. If NRM wants to govern the city, let them seek this mandate from the voters. If opposition wants to govern the city, let them seek the power from the voters. Let's stop the legal maneuvers to control the city because of its strategic location without the will of the people. Kayonde, your closing remarks on this particular topic. Oh, on this particular <coughs> topic, I, want, I would like to say, look, mm. politics in this country <coughs> is affecting service delivery at all levels. That the cost of power retention, you know, has become a bit high, in my opinion. And uh, until we learn to distinguish and dis distinguish and divide the politics and take it out of service delivery in many ways, we shall continue in this in this uh, in this uh, uh, cat and mouse that that is happening. And I was I wanted <coughs> to 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 just say that look, cities elsewhere 
that have technical weeks. Where? Oh, yeah. Whether New York or whatever, are led by political uh, heads who have voted, but their role is simply come at policy level and strategic exactly. and development. Now, look here, the minister in the role, listen, ministers, ministers may not, are not voted anywhere, you know. Now, Musisi is in a role in a Bloomberg leader, the first city leader in residence. She's not elected, but she's running a city. As a planner. Because yes, it's as first a planner. Leader. My point is, it's here. So, the first city leader. As a planner. Residence. Agreed. Yeah. Whatever it is, the point is that her role, even at KCC, was administrative. Rusa, that uh, uh, the executive director, the acting, the the acting, acting uh, mm. ED, is a seasoned administrator in different uh, capacities. Right. Mm. His role is not about pleasing. He's not populist. He shouldn't be anyway. That's the truth. You know. Mm. He should be about implementing things that are going to transform the city with guidance from the political side. Will, now the, poli political will, side, will the political side, especially the side of the NRM, mm. allow him to actually do that? Yes, but the point is, it, it will let him go in as far as their power is threatened. All right, Spectra makes on Radio 1 FM 90. Let's go for a break now. When we return, we'll shift our gears and look at issues to do with the electoral reforms, taking into account the proposals that have been put forward by the former leader of opposition, Matthias Mpuga Nsamba. Stay tuned, Radio 1 FM 90. Keep your comments coming, and we will reflect on them as the show progresses. Well, thank you so much for staying with us on Spectrum Extra, live on Radio 1 FM 90, reviewing the major events of the week. We have just concluded the discussion on the state of affairs in Kampala following the sacking of uh, the executive director, Doris Kisaka, the deputy, uh, David, engineer David uh, Luimbazi, and the director of public health, um, that is uh, Dr. Daniel o Okello. Well, b b before we move on, maybe a piece of advice for... Uh, these people have been put in place in, in acting capacity. Dr. Sarah Vireti, what would you tell them? Why, what do you expect? What do you think awaits them? What would you like to see them do? Uh, some people tend to use this uh, issue, uh, this time frame of the first 100 days. I, I listened to my friend Frank Rusa mm. talk about the first uh, 100 days with the ex exciting things mm. and licensed petrol stations that are in very awkward spaces if Kampala caught fire. There are few spaces that would survive. There are open manholes. About, yes, uh, and all those things. Enforcement, brutality of enforcement officials. Yes. Mm. So I, I can only wish him well, but he needs to know that KCCA's problem is entrenched in the law and the power, the, the political cocktail or political confusion at KCCA. So maybe if he wants to be successful, he has to find a way of respecting the elected leadership of the people because they are the sovereign leaders of Kampala and as he does his work but if he comes with the approach of uh, trying to undermine opposition this is NRM takeover it will be the same story you cannot hijack spaces like that finally, Mr. Kayonde. At, least, finally at least we agree with, the <laughs> with Madam Sarah that the issues at, at, uh, at uh, cases here are more political than anything. It's a political establishment. Yeah, yeah, Do you want uh, it to act like a religious no, group? No, no, no. But that's not what we need as a city right now. It's not no. politics. A city is we are knowledge. saying, we are saying that look, the people who are defending, uh, a, a, a friend of mine, uh, uh, Mr. Paul Sekajugo has sent me a message and said, look, the people who are defending Lukwago are the same people who keep sending him there to participate in a role which he has absolutely no powers other than ceremonial so yeah. are you expecting no. voters to no, say no, no, not no, voting no, the no, mayor? That's what I'm saying. No. This is an elective post. Exactly. Mr. Constitution. Mr. Say, Mr. Kayonde. My point I'm trying to say. Yes. yes. So what should that voters elective do? post has roads beyond just where going so, to... So, no, you are saying a friend. He should perform. Your friend is suggesting no. that there should be no post for Lord Mayor. No. That voters that should lose let him play his role and understand... Ceremonial. No. Ceremonial is just one of them. Let him play his role. Give the give whatever uh, accountability to the people and come and say, look, the strategy. There are things. Let me tell you, you 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 lose nothing as Lukwago to go to the central government, which is headed by the president. So you want him oh, to go needing no, 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 ministers. Wait, look, 
whether it is a minister, whether it's a president, what would he lose to go and to lobby, near, eh? whether Neil or do whatever, to lobby for I, I, I wouldn't for want, I, I wouldn't want, let me ask I wouldn't you. want an elected leader to be reduced to a Mr. Kayonde. Kampala that we are talking about. Kampala that we are talking even about. So you want him to even, get for what? Even when you are elected in the <laughs> position, you, you have, have responsibility to everyone. Either that who voted, Mr. Either the person who voted for you or not. Mr. Kayonde, yeah. Kampala is directly under the president's office. Agreed. It is the so, eye of our country called Uganda. Yes. The Lord Mayor should go and lobby. He and should be be Look, every and lobby, lobby, lobby the people who are supposed lobby, to invest in the city. You know, I'm going to vote as elected. How many people go to parliament voters. every budget cycle? He goes to, to parliament. parliament. He goes to parliament. Exactly. He goes Why, to parliament. If you can go to parliament to lobby, yeah. that... Uh, to, to, want him to, to, go to, the to go to the budget committee yeah. and ask for money. Right. Why is it so difficult to, to go, go to the president? president? Yes, because can you imagine? Yeah. Well, pathetic. No, oh, no, no, yeah. pathetic. No, 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 no. Is it a, an no. elected leader should work in accordance with the constitution? We, yeah, cannot reduce, elected. we cannot reduce. We cannot reduce our leaders to beggars that go to state house. To no, even the, even the president that is that elected. Unacceptable. Anyway, we shall continue in this mess for as long as our leaders... Well, from going by I, I think going by what, the is clear, what is clear, Mr. Moderator, mm. is that the central government took over the administration of Kampala. They them accept their failures. Chitez failure is a failure of central government. It is not a failure of road mayor. All right, it looks like the way the discussion is going on in studio here, that's how issues will continue in Kampala unless, <laughs> unless, unless certain um, measures are actually taken, either through the law or sitting down on the table and agreeing on who should actually do what. Now, let's move on, and I'll begin with you, Dr. Sarah Birete. Earlier today, um, the former leader of opposition, uh, Matthias Impuga Samba, addressed the media and made public plans to bring uh, several amendments, uh, some of them constitutional, others electoral, uh, with a view of ensuring that the next election that we have in this country is credible. One, he wants term limits restored and entrenched, the presidential term limits. Two, he wants a country to have a second tier of parliament headed by deputy president, who will also be on the ballot paper as a running mate. He wants the upper house to have 39 MPs from original 39 districts. So we'll have a second house if his proposal is accepted, where uh, we'll have 39 representatives, and that house will be chaired by the deputy president, who will be a running mate uh, of uh, the president. Then uh, the third issue, he wants the size of parliament reduced to 146, with uh, an MP being elected from each district. But we should retain uh, women district representatives and the seats for MPs from the 10 cities. Fourthly, he says, allow voters to petition court in a presidential election uh, petition. At the moment, only the aggrieved party, uh, the presidential candidates, can petition the Supreme Court. He wants declaration of presidential results done at district as it's done for MPs before transmission of the same to the National Tally Center. Uh, number six, he wants prisoners and Ugandans in the diaspora to be allowed to vote. Your take on these proposals? Well, maybe if I quickly go one by one, the, it was a mistake to lift term limits. Mm. We know the purpose it was meant to serve just to keep one individual in power. The people who participated in the campaign to lift term limits have since confessed that it was an oversight. They they did not legislate for the pros prosperity of the of the country. It was a, a short term amendment. It was wrongly restored in the 2017 amendments. Mm -hmm. So I think there is consensus from amongst stakeholders after that admission that lifting term limits was a grave mistake for this country. Mm -hmm. That one is not contested. The second introduction of a two-tier parliament, when uh, you say that uh, the upper chamber should be headed by the deputy president, you are creating a fusion in the doctrine of separation of powers. The doctrine of separation of powers is that executive runs alone, legislature runs alone and the judiciary runs alone although they can be 
interconnected in terms of, of work that needs them to coordinate. We have a unique situation in the US where the vice president I was coming to that. Uh, chairs the Senate. The vice president is a is is a tiebreaker in the US Senate. The US Senate has its speaker. The the vice president even attends regularly. But she is recognized as a member of the Senate. And she's a tiebreaker whenever there's a deadlock between the two parties. She casts that vote to break the tie in favor of the sitting government. She does not chair the Senate. So we need to respect in this proposal the doctrine of separation of powers, in my view. A, a Senate can be chaired by its own Senate chair, and, and the, the parliament can have its own speaker the way it is in Kenya. Kenya has the lower house and the upper house. South Africa has the same arrangement, but they are not shared. They don't create a fusion between executive and the legislature. So I would refuse that proposal of the deputy president to create a fusion in the legislative arrangement. The proposal to reduce the size of parliament has been on table for a while. The size of parliament has kept expanding because of patronage, creating seats for particular people, but also expanding to make sure you control the majority. And we have constituencies even of less than 3,000 voters when uh, the constituent arrangement in the constitution provides for 30,000. So we have been, also the manner in which these constituencies are done in, is in violation of the provision under Article 537 of the Constitution on how we should create constituencies once every 10 years in one year after conducting a national housing and population census. To the contrary, this parliament has been creating constituencies. Every end of term, they create constituencies because of patronage and, and, and power interests by, by the regime. It's also fundamentally wrong and the where we have reached even the MPs have nowhere to sit. The, even the money to, you know, sustain this parliament. Uganda is choking on public debt, and uh, there is no value for money. The fourth proposal of allowing voters to petition court in a presidential election petition has also been proposed in several instances, and there are situations. In Kenya, voters are allowed as well as presidential candidates. So we have uh, cases to benchmark from. Because if you have a right to vote, and then they, you, you should have a right to complain where things have not gone wrong. So it's not, it's not far-fetched, and I think it's not fatal. Declaration of presidential results for districts as is done for MPs at the district, and then transmission happens later. It's long overdue. We have a lot of opaqueness in the transmission, tabulation, and announcement of presidential results. The National Tally Center has never been effective. People who have been at the National Tally Center, including media, they know that the computers are always blank. Nobody sees where results come from, or they see our cheats coming for announcements. We need a transparent way of, tab of announcement, of transmission, of tabulation of presidential results so that whoever is declared as a winner, people will have seen and seen the process of how that person won. This opaqueness should be done away with. This is a good proposal and it should be supported. Allowing prisoners and Ugandans in diaspora to vote, there is a consent judgment in the case of Stephen Karari versus Attorney General and the Electoral Commission. The court, the parties considered that indeed it's the right of these people to vote, and they had promised that they, they will give an opportunity for the people to vote in this next election, although nothing is being done, and the Electoral Commission and Attorney General are conducting their affairs in contempt of the court judgment that they signed. And maybe the petitioner needs to go back and slap a charge of contempt of court on their heads. Let's hear from you, uh, Mr. Kayonde, mm -hmm. on the proposed reforms by uh, Honorable Mathias Impoga. Uh, well, I've, uh, I've followed keenly on, on, uh, on all these that have been uh, mentioned, but 
for me, I'm going to first have the, the, the general view of the electoral reforms. Mm. You see, my problem with electoral reforms in this country is that they are designed, everyone who is uh, calling for electoral reforms is calling electoral reforms with an aspect to achieve change of President Museveni's uh, rule. That those who argue about our need and desire for electoral reform acknowledge the fact that you cannot remove President Museveni under the, this uh, legal regime, you know, and hence we need electoral reforms to change uh, the status quo. And for me, that is a bit. Uh, uh, but now who has mentioned President Museveni? No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm the one who has mentioned. The, the, the issue I said, like, look. These electoral reforms, I don't know how far Mpuga will go seeing that Mao, I think, is also bringing uh, electoral reforms. I don't know how the law works, whether the, the government takes over this, uh, these proposals, I don't know. But uh, I feel like uh, the, the same parliament removed, okay, not this parliament, but previously removed pre presidential term limits. Bring them back, I feel, yes, they, I think it's needed. It was, a, a, it was an amendment which, which uh, uh, provided uh, for change, but it was removed by the same parliament. So I think that that would be, I think uh, Mao's uh, proposals, which we haven't seen, also cater for that. Introduction of a second tier of parliament headed by deputy president, well, uh, that's neither here or there. In, uh, I think some of these are being borrowed from, uh, from our neighbors, reducing the size of parliament to 146 MPs. Now, this debate has also you know, gone on for far too long. Um, there, is, there are over 146 women representatives, women representatives, every district. And this position was created for affirmative action, you know? Mm. But affirmative action should have a, a level at which it stops being uh, are women has it served its purpose are women being empowered are, are women laws things like the domestic bill or have women uh, brought bills to further their 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 agenda, agenda? Mm. again that's why i'm saying we can reduce this uh, this parliament without fundamentally reducing the right to to, to for people to choose um, their leaders, you know, uh, allow voters to petition court in presidential election. I mean, uh, if 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 a candidate can't uh, can't uh, can't collect the evidence, uh, is it, will, uh, will will it, will it make a change for a voter to petition? You know, uh, I listened to to Madame Sarah talking about transmission, and I said, look. Today, if you went to the Electoral Commission uh, website, mm. you get results, all the results of the last election, you get them by district, by sub-county, by polling station. You have them. If for no other reason but to create enough doubt, let the candidates or anybody who feel aggrieved show us the discrepancy in this. That's why I'm saying this is a redundant thing to allow voters to petition court. You know, the issue here, and especially the court, has always been very clear. You know, the issue that they always rule against is the substantiality test. That substantiality test is what what brings the problem, which which is about numbers. If you cannot bring the numbers to the court, you're going to have a problem. So I, I feel like. That's a bit redundant. Declaration of presidential results for districts is done for MPs before transmission. I mean, like I've said, even today you can have all the district uh, results for the last presidential election visible. But do, have they changed much? It's another redundant. Wait, wait, the, the, the argument there is that uh, sometimes what has been announced at the polling station does not uh, tally with what is announced at the national tally center. That has been the argument. So they, they want all the polling stations uh, and uh, declared at the district level. Uh, uh, so no. that uh, uh, d d there's no delay. People uh, uh, get to know exactly how many they scored where 
so that they are able to match with what the electoral commission is declaring at the national tally center well i think for me uh, most importantly i think uh, what the electoral commission usually does in my opinion is that it controls announcement of results uh, for various reasons security uh, you know their it systems hey. for so many things they control the announcement but as far as tampering with the result, I, I, I highly doubt. And because the evidence hasn't uh, presented otherwise. All because right. uh, all their results are mm. here. Mm. They have publicized them. Anybody with contrary results should be able to even give us the most basic of comparisons. All right. right? We have comments coming in. George listening in from Bunga Resident says, in Puga's constitutional amendments, proposal are very brilliant, but the question is where will they pass and who will approve them because parliament is a rubber stamp of the NRM. Secondly, how can you beat the finger which feeds you? The beneficiary of this scam of not allowing the mentioned amendment for all along has been the beneficiary, the president, because he's their source of fraud for elections. Then we have another comment here. Uh, ben and Fred Winamasko, my concern is about why Honorable Mpuga uh, could not introduce the reforms when he was lop. While he was lop, he, he had all the powers to follow up uh, with these amendments. Well, our third panelist has joined us, Imam Idi Kasozi, lecturer at the Islamic University in Uganda. He comes from the Justice Forum Party. He's also a farmer. Imam, uh, better late than never. You found us discussing uh, issues to do with uh, electoral reforms as proposed by the Honorable Mathias Impuga. And um, let's begin from there. Thank you very much and uh, very sorry. The fault is not mine. It is those who captured the roads. <laughs> they can decide <laughs> to keep one hour waiting. You can't, you can't believe. The fault is yours. You can Tuesday. as well start the journey very uh, early. No, why should I? Because I have spent one hour from Kororo from yes yes Kololo. yes if, the, if there's anyone who has been around kampala longer than the rest here in the studio it's Imam yeah, I, I know but, but, yeah, and but, he knows his kampala and the, and the use of the road should mm. be proper all right uh, i'm i'm sorry the listeners and viewers uh, good, good evening my colleagues uh i think uh, i very few people are opposed Mm. to electoral reforms. Mm. But what do we need to put in these reforms probably is the issue. Mm. Those that are conversant with the, the citizens' compact, they know many of these issues were raised. But because we live under a patronage system, it is not very easy to go for this reforms. Uh, and even when they come, many of those that we are proposing or we wish to see affect those who pass them. That's where actually we have a bigger challenge. Uh, for example, I don't know how many MPs are willing to say that we reduce, we cut the number of, of MPs. Mm. I don't know how many uh, Sarah is here. She may be relating very well with her colleagues. This issue of women, affirmative action, how many women we, uh, will also support that? Much as the general women folk doesn't really benefit from this. It's just a few individuals that have benefited. That's why they have made it uh, some seven, seven times. You see, 35 years, 20, 15. To, to me, if affirmative action is, if we want affirmative action, we say, uh, what, every lady that takes this opportunity takes it for five years. That means we have created many more women leaders who have tested the parliament and therefore they can be utilized in other aspects. But if we only think, that uh, uh, affirmative action for our mothers, our sisters, is only in parliament or in the parliamentary space, then we are not helping very much. Uh, mine, mine is more radical than what they are proposing. Mm. Because for me, I was thinking, mm. if we divided Uganda into 10 regions, and we have two women representatives for each region, 
those are 20. Mm. Then the remaining now 147 districts that I think we have. So that means we have 127. The money that goes to, the, to them in terms of salary and whatever, and we, we divert it to women affairs in this country, these 127 people, even if it is only 10 million each per month, it would make a lot of sense to me. Than those representatives in Paris. Yes, because mm. the, this representative, other than giving us some of go and uh, <laughs> some small, small, small things, what it is? It goes to them as individuals. Therefore, the, the bigger picture does not come out. Uh, two, uh, then we, even the general, the general, uh, the, the general MPs, even 149 they are suggesting, 146, yeah, are too many. Yeah, we need a hundred. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Really? 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 Yeah. We don't, true. We don't need for problems. example, for example, look at Kampala. Kampala has 10 MPs. It has uh, six RDCs. <laughs> RCCs. Okay? Mm. It has six mayors. It has six town clerks. It has very many others. Where, what are they doing? We are, Zero. We are wasting a lot so the, of all that, all that money that goes to them individually in their position they were paying, if we had put their technical people, mm. limited in number, knowing what to do, you know, we are easily convinced that when we subdivide like this, we are taking services to the, to pe the people. It's a lie. A pure lie. Complete pure lie. Just creating you a burden. The, 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 the population I know has grown. But when I was young, going to school, second school at my time, <coughs> almost every district had about four schools. But these schools were valuable schools. Yeah. Tuition was uniform. You are in entire school, entire school, Mara High School, Chitunga High School, Ibanda. These were the boys' schools, I think, in Ankole then. Mm. Uniform. Guira Nyanji, Mere Hiru. I don't know which other girls' school was there then. Chizoa. Uh -huh. Chizoa is new. Yeah. Chizoa is mm. a recent school. Yeah. Is it mm. 79, I think, 80. Mm -hmm. So, but people would get quality education. Today, if we want to get quality education outside the Kampala, Mukona, and Wakiso, that triangle, you have to go to a private school, save for very few that have <coughs> remained with that quality. And therefore, we have congestion here. So equally, the amendments Honorary Mpuga is proposing the issue, this issue of urging, did he need to get out of before? No, that is not a, the issue. The issue is, are they valuable? Do we need them? Yes. Okay, so how do we help our people understand this? Not the MPs, but the ordinary people, so that we can agitate for this one. Otherwise, we have members, we have members of parliament here representing <coughs> about 800 people. All right. Okay, oh, they have about 800 voters. All right. Then you have another where they have 200 and something voters. Where is the, where the proportionality? All so, right. Imam, let's go for a break. When yes. we return, I will allow you to comment on the other proposed reforms as we continue reflecting uh, on these proposals that have been put forward by the Honorable Mathias Mpuga. But keep your comments coming via the WhatsApp line. When we return from the break, I'll be reading out some of uh, the comments that have come in. As we continue reviewing this matter, stay tuned Radio 1 FM 90. Spectrum Extra continues after this break. Thank you so much for staying with us on Spectrum Extra Live on Radio 1 FM 90, reviewing the major events of the week. My guest this evening, uh, Dr. Sarah Birete, Chief Executive Officer at the Center for Constitutional Governance, Mr. Isaac Kayonde, Kashuji Economist, Political Analyst, uh, who ran for the Gomba West Parliamentary Seat under the NRM. And uh, also in studio, Imam Idikasozi, lecturer at Islamic University in Uganda, member of the Justice Forum Party. A uh, uh, very good farmer in uh, our country. Imam, very quickly, if you can uh, wind up your points okay. on, the, on the reforms. And the, then we I think the last, these others, reduction of the parliament, I agree, 
but the, the number is still high, mm. according to me. Uh, two and you are, you are supported by uh, somebody here, Kamadi Vionavie from the uh, Uganda Human Rights Commission. So we do not need 146 women representatives, as Imam Kasozi is saying. We just need a few women MPs, maybe at a regional level. And he also says, kindly inform that gentleman that we have women MPs and not women MPs. There is need to review the composition of Parliament under Article 78, Subsection 2 of the Constitution. Yes, I think the petitioning, uh, maybe what, what we need in the petitioning is to give it, I think, to some more time. Then the problem, what uh, uh, my friend Kayonde, uh, Kayonde, I hope he's the son of the, Kay the Kayonde, you know. Yes, yes. Uh, Yafes. <laughs> Was it Yafes? Israel. Israel, yes. Okay. So, uh, glad to meet you. Glad to meet you. Uh, uh, the problem is, the, the website is there, but how many people have the ability to access these websites? That is number one. Number two, at what time do they put this, this, these results there? You see, that's where the whole problem is. Look at now, ever since we finished the census, they have told us, I think, on the second, that's when they're giving us the final uh, result. Mm. Uh, but even when they give that final result, you will find if those of, those of us that have some knowledge about uh, demographics, the population demographics, we shall still find some issues because of the nature of the way we conduct some of the, uh, these investigations. So the problem is, when is this data fed, fed there? Uh, who feeds it there? Okay, uh, if. If it is genuine at that time, why is it then that it becomes now hard? Why is it displayed yeah, uh, during the transmission? Uh, uh, if no, it's genuine, my point it's is, never yes. displayed. Ask the media. Uh, Imam, uh, allow me. Yeah, please do. Respect. I uh, in in um, Kiza Besage's book, yes, uh, written by Daniel Kainaki. Mm. He talks about the 2011 uh, election, election. Mm. where he I think he had said work to work. Yes. So the ambassadors of the European Union call him to go and sit uh, somewhere in uh, this mm -hmm. near Renzori Towers. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, they call him into a meeting. They ask him, look, we have looked at this election from every angle. We don't see how you won this election by the figures you're saying. Please, provide us with your figures that you are coming up with to say that you won this election, mm. would be glad to look at them. And basically you told them, okay, fine. If you don't believe that I won this election, I have no business being here, I <laughs> walked away, right? So for me, I want us to differentiate the perception vis-a-vis -vis the fact that you see, it is one thing to say, ah, ah, they have cheated me. Like even me, I lost an election and I went, ah, they have cheated me. Mm. But mm. it is another thing to tell people by how much, how and when. Uh -huh. See, so now, Electoral Commission has, we, regardless of their issues, has published their results. You, you, you see, Mr. Kayonde, the, the, uh, the onus now is on those if who you, think. No, my if, problem is, mm. by the time they publish it, many things have already gone wrong. wrong. That's okay. number one. Including uh, the, the, the person who has been announced as the winner being sworn in. <laughs> then, then, then the, se the, the second scenario, actually, basically, actually was also, the, by the mere fact that actually he went to them, he fell into their trap. You see, these people from Western, the Western Democrats, as they call themselves, mm. they are not as genuine as we also think. I, I, I agree with you. I, I want to give you my, my personal experience. I applied for the U.S. visa. They subjected me to what they call administrative processing. They sent me a form to fill. And they gave me what I call silly questions. For example, they asked me, give us, for the last 15 years, where, which, can, wh wh which countries have you visited? How long have you stayed? Who paid for you? For what reason? Mm -hmm. Fortunately, I am one of those people who, have, who keep my, my data. Because I have a, what I call a memory book as a demographer. 
and I gave them. They sat in on to it for two years. Yesterday, actually yesterday, mm. somebody now calls me. And say, I'm still interested in going the, the, getting the U.S. visa. I said, yes, but I am surprised the way you are. And when I presented my arguments, he asked me, are you annoyed? I said, I'm, I am not. Then he said, e because he expected me, maybe, to get excited. Then I told him, no. It is you, you are prerequisite to give me a note. I, I cannot force you. But just because you, 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 you I, I want it also does not make me be downtrodden. Because the U.S. visa is not life and death to me, yeah. at least for me, and, uh, I, I, and if I was staying in the U.S., like they think, I should have stayed when I went there for the first time in the 1990s. Today, at, at 65, mm -hmm. what, what, what do I need, really? <laughs> Rather than just, and because I told him I was invited to give a talk. Maybe I can now go because I have part of my family is there. But even if you don't give me, I am not, I, I, I am not what? So they are not as transparent as we see them. They, should, they also need to make some adjustments that will convince people who are in the know, okay? Rather than subjecting us to that. So Bessie was invited because they knew she did not have the details of this. Number one, she did not have uh, what do we call them? Uh, Declaration forms. No, forget mm. the, results forms. The people who represent him on every polling station. Agents. Oh, agents. He did not have agents all over the country. Two, the declaration forms themselves have issues in this country. Uh, three, by the way, I also, I also still ask myself, do we need agents when we are paying people to do this work? And there's also a problem of we, ballot staffing. Do, we, from do, the do I see? Do I sit in the class to see whether my, my child is, is being taught after paying school fees and I know the, the teacher is, being, is going to be paid salary? No. Equally, the electoral commission should have that ability to work we, without us looking on them like this and sometimes causing unnecessary tension that leads to problems with the results. Thank you. All right. Um, this issue of electoral reforms, uh, Dr. Sarah Vilete, like uh, Imam Idikas also pointed out, we had a citizen compact. We, we, we have a situation where ev everybody seems to be coming up, but some people argue that it, it should actually be a priority of the government itself. We, we, we heard from uh, the whole of the other two weeks we were reflecting on the proposals that uh, Mao had put across. You know, um, should we say that uh, probably the government does not, you know, understand the issues that need to be addressed because if the bill comes from the government then it's easier to push it through um, parliament as opposed to private members like uh, Mathias Impuga coming up with the bills. Well many Ugandans have been advocating for credible electoral reforms for a while. The Citizens Compact was the work by civil society and the political parties combined who went all over the country, gathering views of the people on what changes they wanted to see in the elections regarding <coughs> constitutional and electoral law provisions. The compact was ignored. It has been gathering dust for a while now, since 2015. So when you look at the previous amendments we've had in the Constitution, Amendment to remove term limit, amendment to remove age limit that was fast tracked as a private member's bill. If there is something for the president covering his interests, it will be fa 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 fast tracked. But if it is about to the people, even during the same paper commission where term limits were lifted, there were so many beautiful recommendations in the same paper commission. But once the regime got what their interest was, which was lifting term limits in exchange for introducing uh, multi-party politics. They, they shelved the other uh, amendments in the same paper report. They are still gathering dust, very fundamental amendments, gathered through a popular process of the same paper commission. 
So when you look at that history, and the, to, to culminate it all is the Supreme Court recommendations in the Amama Mbaba's petition in 2016, where the Supreme Court put a timeline for electoral reforms to be enacted in the first two years of every parliament. Also, the Supreme Court has been ignored. So you have a leadership that does not only ignore people, that does not only ignore the commissions it establishes, like the same people commission, but also ignores the decisions of the highest court in the land, including Supreme, like Supreme Court. So the Supreme Court ruled that for every tenure of parliament, constitutional reforms should be enacted in the first two years so that there is time for all stakeholders to internalize these reforms and implement them to make the next election better. What is the effect of, uh, why do people seek reforms? Mm. Reforms are meant to create improvement. But we have a blockage of a system that benefits from the sham elections we keep conducting, from the questionable elections, at least going by the Supreme Court judgments in the three times they've been tested. The Supreme Court has ruled that our elections fall short of what is envisaged in the Constitution. But there is no commitment to improve them. And that's why electoral reforms are ignored. Mr. Kayonde. Yeah. For me, um, I mean, everybody wants uh, a better electoral process. And uh, to that extent, really, they, they uh, require electoral reforms. But my biggest uh, problem has been that uh, these electoral reforms usually have uh, an undertone of uh, being targeted. The electoral reforms are more targeted to the president in the sense that they are the, the, those who 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 are proponents for them are pushing for a situation where they can be able to remove President Museveni. And for me, I feel that's a bit undemocratic. Now, when why do you what, keep dragging so what we have seen? Because, because, yeah, it's, it's, who is mentioning him? Uh, me. Uh -huh. me. But, 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 but also what I, I want to make but my but elections but are for see, more than one million elected, see, elected, elected Mr. leaders Kayon, in this yeah, country. But you see also the reforms that have come from the government, most yeah. cases they have been to favor President favor, Museveni. Uh, okay, yes, yes that's why I'm we saying. The term limits yes, when he was caught up. Yes, the age limit yes, when he was caught up. Yes. And, and, and now I, there is a suggestion that we should, we should not have direct presidential elections. Should when, be parliament when, actually. When no, wait, no, first of all, no, nobody has proposed that. We are purely speculative on that in that aspect. Oh, no, but Mao on record in he, 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 and he has you can check you can check. He, he was on he record published in a all, government paper, the new video. Yes, and he, he has published all his reforms that he was suggesting and that was not one of the proposals. Anyway, you, you feel free to, to, to go. Me my, my point I'm trying to say, electoral reforms should not be a thing uh, and uh, like I said, the undertones should it should not be a a, a thing to uh, either entrench in the in the sense of, of government or uh, or remove uh, one particular leader i think electoral reforms should be to better the process in many ways uh, and and that's uh, that's really my take on it but for me i again say look you bring a reform like uh, uh, reducing the mps and everything i agree that the size of the parliament is big but for me i'm saying if the parliament was 400 like it was when they were removing the age limit. If they had managed, for example, to say no to the age limit, would we not be celebrating that parliament? Perhaps we would, you know? So for me, what we need to concentrate on, one, is the quality of MP that we are producing uh, to be able to beat all these machinations. Uh, one reason why the quality is like that. All right. It mm. is because they have made a parliament look like a market. <laughs> so then they can go to the market. All right. Uh, let's listen from uh, these views that are coming. Let's listen to these views that are coming in. We didn't expect them. I have one big issue when it comes to women emancipation in Uganda. Uganda's parliament representation. Women keep demanding for equality with men, saying that a man can do what a, a, a woman can do what a man can. A, a, ma, a, a woman can do better what a man does. When they should, no, when they should even be having district woman MP, as if, well, his his statement is 
quite of jumbled up. It's not very clear. But let me read out this one. The electoral reforms we need include removal of individual pictures on the ballot and leave only party symbols to cure Uganda as uh, to cure Uganda from the individual merit syndrome. Reduce election costs by sp separating election years for different levels of, of government. It doesn't help when all elected leaders' offices fall vacant in the same year and we end up with a vacuum that's filled by armed forces and waste an entire productive year in electioneering, e.g. president, MPs should be elected in different years. Then we have another comment. Uh, okay, Patrick Bonyo, listening in from Busaga, says the issue of running mate, deputy president, cannot work in our political setting because we are so selfish politically and morally. Look at what's happening now in Kenya, where there is a rift between the president and his deputy, and chances are high for a fallout. I'm sure most MPs will fight back that proposal. Then we have another comment. I'm listening keenly to the, pan the submission of the panelists. I can't agree more with uh, Sarah's submission on constitutional amendments. They are spot on. That's a comment coming in from um, Alan. We have another comment. Good good proposal. Now, that number of MPs should, but that number of MPs should be thinner to 150 maximum. Then let's add this. MPs disagree to vie salaries to vie um, salary scale to uh, should change to 5 million. Term limits to two terms. MPs to be liable to constituency development, not only law making. These are surely good electoral reforms proposals, but suppose Nyendo Mukungwe is one of the dissolved constituencies. Are you ready to give it up? Uh, that's a comment there. <laughs> Andre Kiwanda, Kiwanda Rising says, Good evening, Kenneth. I think it's mean for someone to think they should regulate border borders in the city where roads designed to carry three lanes. A whole lane is set aside for parking for from morning to evening when we are surprised border borders are on pavements. Please street parking should be stopped with immediate effect basement and rooftop parking be promoted the cars should be moving that's a comment from henry there wangale tony listening in from bali rising says good evening spectrum extra electoral forms a number of mps struggle to win in an election in a mere constituency and now you tell the very mp to run a district it's like telling one who is struggling to climb an anthill to climb a mountain i doubt whether uganda's parliament can approve such a reform then we have another comment. Thanks for the very informative show. Could one of the panelists throw some light on the financial implications of a two-tier parliament? How do they envisage uh, the structure being funded? I predict more misery for the uh, already disgruntled taxpayer. That's Rona listening in from Kampala. Uh, good evening, Kenneth. Arthur from Kalangi, Kalangari, Kalangari in Mkono. We must appreciate that current form of pol political wing in the city is like a good looking castrated bull it can never perform in terms of the its natural purpose president bahura wants it in that current form well those are some of the comments that are coming in from the listeners uh we still have one more the gentleman in studio has lost the direction he is defending the state against the state Please come clear so people can draw the dichotomy between the political and technical operations in the Kampala City. Confusion, Kampala City confusion. That's why Wilson Bikakanga, Muyenga there with that uh, particular comment. Uh, another one coming in here. A mayor Lukwago is innocent. He has been held hostage for being on the wrong side. That's Mawa Amaza listening in from Moyo District. Well, Imam, um, you heard the comments that are coming in from yes. uh, the, the listeners. You, you you were not here when we discussed yes. the situation in Kampala. And maybe this could be an opportunity for you uh, as we come towards the end of this okay. show. Uh, your closing remarks uh, and uh, take into account the, fa the situation that we have in Kampala, reflective of the comments that have come in from the listeners. Uh, let me start with uh, the problem of saying that... Uh, Many MPs in the district are failing. The, what about one? The problem is because the MPs, largely they are not doing what is in the docket. What they are doing is personal things, just because they want to come again. Not to help the country change, no. Otherwise, if people stuck to what an MP should be doing, and they do it rightly, things will be different. The other Friday I was in Kivoga, and some, some MPs were attending the function. Then I said that uh, you, the population were the problem. 
because you are pushing these MPs for everything that comes your way, thinking that they, they are going there for you, make them forget to even concentrate on what they should be doing for us as a nation to benefit. I'm telling you, the MPs came and whispered to me, we wish you, ca you can come back to our whatever. But that apart, for KCC, eh, we have a very, a very, a very, very big, 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 big problem. Mm. Because instead of managing KCCA or the city, we want to get favors from the population and the, uh, the voters. And unfortunately, because of ignorance of the majority of our people, they think it is right. One time, some people say, "Why don't you stand?" I told them that you see, when I stand, I will be. I told them I will, to contest. I will, I, yes, mm. I, I, I will. I will start with you, because if I became a, a, a road man, if, for example, by bad luck, the way that I pointed my friend uh, Rosa, Rosa. Mm. if I if I was the one, I would immediately declare the whole central business district actually. Free zone for no border border at all for me. Yeah. You see, I, that's what I would start with. First of all, no, no, none of them, and then move on and on with us. And unfortunately, when you do that, mm. the appointing the appointing authority will you will be threatening his roots, and then he'll go on the other side, as you have seen before. So what I think is important is does we should first of all ask does kcc a generate enough resources or enough income to help them handle okay there are many other things in, because uh, for, why should for example somebody bring here rumonde oh cassava bring with leaves Cassava leaves, <laughs> rumonde leaves. And the stems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For what purpose? Do we need <laughs> them? Just because somebody wants to have a, a, a sack of protruding. All right. So, that, Please that, give that, the, the, the last thing time. I want to mm. say about mm. this because of time, mm. I'm sorry, I, 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 I don't... I, I, the, until, until we accept that the, 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 the political arm of Kampala Plus, the executive arm of Kampala begin to talk the same language. We still have, we are going to still have those problems. You right. even see, mm. you, you, you know now the battle between the mayor and his executive yes. with yes. The, the, the council. Yes. The other day I listened and I said, what hero is this? <laughs> the last thing is, most of these politicians we have around Kampala here, they have also refused to grow. They are still behaving like when I was young. If you beat me on the road and you had eaten food at my home, mm. I would tell you, you even ate our food. <laughs> we should live from that, yes. that pettiness All right. and go back and say, mm. what do we need in this city? And we move with that. Do we need an elected mayor or an appointed mayor, Imam? Should we change the law? I, I, I elected mayor. Uh, 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 if if we are going to, we are, if we are still appointing executive director, the actual question should be: When we have an executive director, do we need a mayor? All right. My answer would be: We need one of the two, not both. Timothy, we don't. We don't. We, also, we, we also don't need a minister for Kampala. Thank we don't need. Thank Repeat that all right. Timothy Chimondes writes and says electoral reforms that favor political class, especially in the establishment, are given top priority. It's never about the people. This can be evidenced uh, by the citizens' compact that is in the shelves. Very quickly, uh, gentlemen, uh, closing okay. remark in one minute. Uh, I'm, I'm very glad uh, Imam Kasozi has uh, has highlighted mm. uh, has highlighted the issue of uh, of, of uh, KCC that we were saying earlier. Uh, I would like to thank him for that. 
it's more politics than than anything. All right. Uh, then, uh, lastly, on the electoral reforms, and again, like I said, someone a viewer there uh, was talking about me defending, and uh, I said the views expressed here are mine, and they are, I don't come to this show mm. as a as a spokesperson for government. And uh, lastly, again on electoral reforms, and I said we we may we we might need them, mm. but uh, they are not the utmost thing that we are looking at. Sarah, punch it in a few seconds. Your closing remarks. I wish the new leadership of Kampala mm. a better working relationship, but I will still call for the repeal of the KCCA Act. Let's have one mainstream leadership that we can hold accountable for the bad deeds, but also commend for the good deeds. Right, with that, we come to the end of Spectrum Extra. Thank you very much, dear panelists, for making time to be here. And thank you very much, dear listeners, not only for tuning, but also contributing your views. I've been your host, Kenneth Lukwago. Anderson. Up next, we have a news from the BBC. Thereafter, we'll continue with great songs and great uh, memories. Do me enjoy to say my your weekend. Condolences to the